I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Mike, this is a clickbait. Gang starter kit. I mean every word. Every single word. By the end of this episode, I encourage you to be a member of a gang or start your own. And I have a compelling argument. Take the word gang and replace it with community or tribe. But you and your EDC and your couple buddies with ARs and all the capability and all the training, you're not going to get it done. We live in a country where, on average, there are about two and a half officers per thousand people. By the time law enforcement officers get to you, it's likely too late. They're collecting the evidence, picking up the pieces. So we talk about it. We educate it on the Philcraft Survival app. We teach it. I just came back from rewilding where we're talking about these things. It's very important to be your own first response, to be self-reliant. It's also important to understand the importance of strength and capability in numbers. Right now, MS-13 exists in 46 states. 30% in recent years, 30%, nearly a third of those arrested from MS-13 came into this country as unaccompanied minors. That's right. And that stat's a year old. Now, with a year, a good fiscal year, of degrading the sovereignty, safety, and security of our country, imagine what that number looks like today. 50%? 60%? I wouldn't be surprised. Because it's not only people from Venezuela, Honduras, El Salvador, Brazil... But it's all over the world. And what do you think happens to poor children who come across that aren't being tracked, because we lost track of them, DHS reports losing track of millions of children. What do you think happens to them? Oh, they find an adopted family and they are raised in a good home and they live their best life with all the opportunities afforded. No, they become part of the system. Part of a broken system. So you think it's easy to manipulate children? Or, I don't know, if you're smart because you're MS-13, you've been operating for a while, how about we just send our children over that are members of MS-13? How about we take those kids that are already members and send them over and have them find their home? Gang lands rule the world when you have a breakdown of sovereignty, safety, and security in nations. I didn't understand this when I was operating in Iraq and Afghanistan because I knew there was like sectarian violence, religious, religious groups of people. <laughs> what are you doing, dude? One, two, one, two. What the? There you go. Here, you got to fill this up with water. Show, buddy, go show her how to put water. Let in. me give you an example of what took place in Haiti, where you had two hundred different gangs. 200 different gangs. And a gentleman by the name of Jimmy. Jimmy Barbecue. Yeah, that's his nickname, Barbecue. I think it's really funny. He comes from a line of barbecue and decided to be a gang member. He started the G9 family affiliation, or the G9 gang, which was nine at the time. Now it's a dozen different gangs started operating together. Like They're like the JSOC of gangs in Haiti. They are responsible for the most chaos killing up to 1,500-plus people in recent months and 4,500 to gang violence last year. In fact, there are government organizations that are negotiating with Jimmy Barbecue because he has thousands of gang members that broke out 4,000 criminals, mostly belonging to a gang of some kind, and they're killing each other, and they're killing innocent people. So... They're capable because they have a strength in numbers. Now, here's what is interesting. In order to be a gang member or to be in charge of a gang, you got to know what a gang is. Here are the parameters of the characteristics that make up a gang. One, organized structure. Gangs have a task organization and hierarchy in chain of command and chain of custody. It's very simple. If you want to be a member of a gang, you come in at the bottom and you work your way to the top. Two, criminal activity. In order to be in a gang, you have to be conducting 
acts of violence, extortion, murder, robbery, and of course, classic drug activity. Three, territorial control. If you're in a gang, you have territory. It's like monopoly. You want to own Boardwalk, you want to defend it, and you want to sell drugs on it. So if you're in a gang, you're holding real estate. These are defined not by borders or cross intersections, but sometimes imaginary lines draw in the sand. Gangs will protect their territory at all costs. Four, symbols and signs. If you're in a gang, you have esprit de corps, but you also have near, far recognition signals to understand who's a member of your gang. Hand and arm signal, the gang sign, that's important in a gang because that's how you non-verbally communicate. If you got certain tattoos, if you're wearing certain colors, certain clothing, then you can non-verbally communicate to other members or to the opposing gang. Five, recruitment. If you're in a gang, in order to maintain your numbers, you need retention, but you also need new blood because the new guys come in at the bottom. They're the foot soldiers, and they work their way up. And so there has to be an incentive structure, but you have to constantly recruit to keep your numbers up. Um, amazing how Biden's administration is facilitating maintaining record-breaking recruitment numbers for gangs. Good job, Biden administration. Six, group identity and culture. Well, if you're not beat in, then there's no incentives. Like, you got to do hard stuff to be part of a gang. You want to know, like, the guys left and right of you, they got beat in just like you. Whoever took the best butt whipping, man, he's got the most clout. So you have to have initiations. You have to have ceremonies. You have to have this line of culture and identity that makes it feel like something you're part of. And last but not least, you need intimidation and violence. Nobody likes a gang full of pussies. You need a gang that's willing to step up and do whatever it takes to get the job done. Intimidation tactics is how you control territories, how you resolve disputes, and how you enforce loyalty amongst members. So, are you a member of a gang? Are you thinking about starting your own? I just gave you the recipe. So I know what you're thinking. Like, Mike, come on. Like, we don't need more gangs. Well, what happens when the sovereignty, safety, and security of a nation degrades? You think you're going to survive? How dare you promote a gang? I'm not promoting a gang. I am promoting you surviving. Because if you're not a member of an organization that has capability, capacity, and strength in numbers, you won't survive. You might think you'll survive. But imagine MS-13 with the thousands of members that exist. When everything degrades and falls apart, they just put their heads together. They just start doing things more organized on the up and up, more overtly. Who do you think is going to control the intersections? Who do you think is going to give safe passage? Who do you think is going to be conducting acts of violence that are capable of overtaking logistical supplies? You need a group. You need an organization. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, well, that's what a militia is. Very different. Actually, gangs number in the thousands in this country. Militias, hundreds. So why is it the government goes after militias? And they demonize it like domestic terrorism will be stopped. You have the Branch Davidians. And there's so much focus on that. But we're not handing gangs their ass. There's no war on gangs. In fact, the cartel as a business model, the cartel is the Amazon of business in America. And yeah, we got the DOJs getting it done. No, you're not. You're not at all. Because I could report on everything that's happening across this country in every single major city, every single day that is related and tethered to the cartel. But why is that? Well, why is that happening? I don't know. You could speculate. Tell me in the comments and give me some feedback on what you think is going on. When you spend your entire career, your professional career, I mean, if you're a member of MS-13, you certainly have a professional career. Although not in a suit and tie, you, you do things every single day. How much experience are you gaining? If I was to ask you how capable you thought the cartel was, well, they're super capable. You should know they have a lot of experience in conflict and killing. 
and violence. So do you have the propensity for violence? When shit hits the fan, are you depending and leaning on first responders to save your ass? Well, if you do, you might want to shift your mindset. Because if the government and the institutions that protect you continue to degrade, you have to be able to take care of your own. Yes, there are few in our society who are capable and who understand what real violence is. Violence in my world doesn't look like chaos. It feels like chaos. But from the inside perspective, it's efficiency. It's proficiency. So you might have an idea or you think you know what violence is, but I want you to remember the most violent professionals in the world are super efficient and can get it done. Now, here's my recommendation to you, because I'm not really saying start your own gang. I'm saying start your own tribe, the good tribe, not the bad tribe, not MS-13, not Bloods, Crips, but the good tribe. You're so handsome. Let me see. Let me put this hat on. Like this. Oh, my boy. That's a cool backpack, man. Give me five. You want to go to the park with Daddy? We'll go to the park in a little bit, okay? I love you. I love you, baby. Almost done. Almost done. That's a survival kit. You want it? Here, you can take it. Don't don't mess it up. It's a survival kit. You can put it in your backpack, okay? I was going to give that to you later, but you can take it now. Hey, guys, if you're interested in Montana Knives, this is one of my favorite knives. I have all of their knives nearly. If you're interested in Montana Knives, you can use MF10 to save 10% on checkout with the link down below. All right, so lastly, I'm not telling you to start a gang. What I'm telling you to do is start your own organization and start grouping and amassing, not a militia, not a gang, but a group of people who are capable and have all the assets to bear. It doesn't follow all the characteristics of militias or gangs, but some. Let me line up the six characteristics of a good group. First, task org. You're going to have to have a task organization, not of foot soldiers versus commanders, but you're going to have to line out how you're going to mobilize, how you're going to safely secure your families in the worst case scenario. So you have to have a smart and sound task organization. A lot of what I'm talking about in task organization, we talk about at AmericanContingency.com. American Contingency is not my group. It is a group that I started on an online form allowing you to accumulate assets in your own backyard. Be sure to check it out at AmericanContingency.com. Offensive and defensive capability. What I mean is you have the offensive capability to go into harm's way and potentially rescue your own and a defensive capability to secure and sustain your sovereignty and security in your own way. Whether that's a home, a compound, a series of buildings, a city street, you need to go over all the standard operating procedures to be able to do that. Three, self-sustaining and reliant. That doesn't just include growing your own food. It includes everything. That includes logistics, communications, first aid. Every single asset that you bring to bear should lend itself in the short term and the long term. We don't know how long this potentially could last, but why would you not have a doctor, a nurse, an EMS professional in your network, in your community, in your tribe? Four, static and mobile defense. What do I mean by that? A lot of what you do logistically involves vehicles, bikes, trucks, planes, etc. You need all those assets internal to your organization. If you have a pilot with a plane, you might want to invite him in the group because you could cross-train him and other things, but having that asset to be able to mobilize, to provide logistical support, but also defend is hugely important. Not only do you need the self-sustaining of those activities, but you actually need the capability. You need the trucks, you need the snowmobiles, you need the motorcycles, and you can't get it done alone as a lone wolf. Number five, a robust communications plan. Guys, you might not have the capability against an armed gang, but if you have communications, a robust combo plan, then you have an advantage because the ability to command and coordinate in real time with all the contingencies from cell phone to sat phone to ham radio is going to facilitate you surviving. 
gangs to use tattoos and gang signs, you like that gang sign, and to communicate, likely do not have a robust communications plan when infrastructure collapses. Six, last but not least, strength in numbers. You need the strength in numbers. There's a reason the cartel, MS-13, Latin Kings, Bloods and Crips in over 20 states have strength in numbers. Sure, members go to prison all the time, but they have the strength because they're constantly recruiting and doing what gangsters do. How are you going to survive if you don't have the strength in numbers? Your local Rotary Club, YMCA, or church is not the same. You are not capable of surviving unless you have a deliberate plan to survive. When chaos is like a cancer that overwhelms the entire country, who do you think survives? Not the person who has the most hope, who has the will and even motivation, but the person who has the most capability and a tribe that's capable of inflicting violence. That's who's going to survive. That's my case. I'm off to the underground because a lot of the things I talk about today will just get shut down on YouTube. I, I imagine this video won't do very well in monetization. If you're interested, join me at my patreon.com forward slash Mike Glover. I'll link it down below. Headed off to the underground to tell you how I really feel. Till next time. Peace out, guys.